Hey basketball players, today I'm going to be breaking down to you how you can play NCAA Division I basketball. Now this is a video you're not going to want to miss because I'm going to give you a couple of different routes on which you can take to be able to play Division I. Let's get down and let's check out how to get to a Division I basketball team. Okay, so to start, you're obviously in high school. If you are already out of high school, it's usually too late. However, that's not always the case. Of course, if you're only a year out of, or your first year out of high school, you can still take this route. Now, first off is, of course, you just get a scholarship out of Division I. That is obviously your number one option. That's what you're always chasing. And of course, to do this, it's gonna take a lot of time and effort and a lot of practice to be able to get to Division I right off the bat. You literally need to be one of the best. The ne next option is, of course, going to a Division I school, but trying out for the team. You would then be classified as a walk-on. Now, that is a risky decision because, of course, you may just not make the team. So that is a very risky option versus the other options that are out there. Another option is to go to a lower-end school, whether it be a D2 or a D3 option, and then later on, after playing one to two years of D2 or D3, moving up to D1 as a main scouted athlete where you don't need to try out. Now this would be a great option for those who never got a Division I scholarship but got a Division II or three team looking at them and gave them some kind of a scholarship. Now not all schools give athletic scholarships. Division II generally doesn't in 99% of cases. However, how they are able to get around that is sometimes usually academic scholarships to be able to play at their school. So what does that mean? Well, that means that you need to have good grades, but you're going to need to have good grades anyways because generally in Division I, you need to be a 90% or better to play for a Division I school coming out of high school. You need to have fantastic grades, and that is number one. You need to be able to do that. That is a very important part, 90% or better. Now, another option is to go to a community college. Of course, if you are looking to play Division I, you should not just go to any community college. You really need to do your homework as to figure out which one has the best teams, and then also contact the coaches to be able to find out what fits your needs. Are you looking for a coach who's going to be a hard coach, but really willing to teach you? A coach who doesn't care all that much, or a coach who is looking to try and get you to further yourself, whether it be academically or as a basketball player or both. Now that is what I would be looking for is a coach who is not just looking after me academically, but also a coach who is willing to help me get to the next level or the next couple of levels, which is the D1 level. You can also go to a HBCU, which has usually a fantastic basketball team as well and of course that is a great option as well to be able to move up to a division one school these are all fantastic options that you could also have in your back pocket if you don't get a division one scholarship now what are some of the things that you need as a high school player to be able to play division one 
This is a mistake that a lot of players make, and that is grades. You need to have fantastic grades to play D1. If you don't have fantastic grades, what you need to do is to go to a prep school before you go to and take that next level, maybe as an extra year after high school or in your grade 12 year. Or what you need to do as well is to just boost up those grades as much as you can to be able to play D1 because you definitely need to have fantastic grades they're not going to be taking any random person out of any high school and say hey you're a LeBron James type player but you're getting 55% and then if that's the case if you're legitly like a, a once in a lifetime high school player like LeBron James or Vince Carter was then and you got really bad grades then basically your alternative is to then possibly declare for the NBA draft because now they're changing that rule once again or possibly playing overseas like Lonzo Ball did or LaMelo Ball the younger Ball brother whoever that was LaMelo I get them all mixed, mixed up but he played over in Australia and he did really well and now he's declaring for the NBA draft so there's still other options for you, but the most, uh, I would say, non-riskiest option is to go through the community college or lower D2, D3 options and then move on to D1. But if you're willing to take the risk, because you can always have college as a backup plan and you're looking to just make money quick, because, of course, money may be a great option for you, maybe you're not growing up in such a great situation then going pro might be the better option putting 25 percent of your earnings to the side for college later on down the road because that would be a very beneficial thing to do if you got a fifty thousand dollar contract and you put twenty thousand away for school later on then that pays for a heck of a lot of school later on and you can keep on doing your professional career until you can't anymore and then you've got that twenty percent on the side which may end up being close to a hundred thousand dollars to go to school afterwards so these are just a few options that you may have as a player. Another thing you're going to need to have is to have a highlight tape of yourself playing. Nothing of these ball is life videos where it's close ups of dunks. You want to be able to show your assists, your defense, your offense, your shooting, your three point shooting, not your free throw shooting, nobody cares. And be able to see the full court so that the coaches who are then scouting you should know why you're not passing and uh, who, why they're passing to you. It just helps. Anyways, I hope that you have enjoyed today's video. If you're looking to have somebody edit a highlight tape for you, I can do that. Go check out a link down below and I'll see you guys again next time.